Hey YouTube, it's Robert and I've got a video for you today after a little bit of an absence. Uh, I apologize, it's been a couple months since I made a video but I had a couple surgeries and had a lot of projects I was trying to get done before I knew I physically wouldn't be able to for a little while so uh, it's good to be back. If you want to give me a warm welcome you can start by hitting the like button. If at the end of this video you feel so inclined you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button for me as well. Uh, I'll probably ask you a couple questions at the end of this video related to what you might want to see in some future videos. But as for today's video, I really wanted to hit uh, a common question that I've seen approached from other YouTubers and eBay sellers in a pretty uh, redundant and predictable way. Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a different approach on it. But that question is, what should you start selling when you get started on eBay? Uh, and the common answer, if you've watched other videos, you'll already know, generally is start with the things that you have around your house. Start with the things that are, are in a closet, in your garage, uh, things that you just you know haven't touched in a while but are already paid for and you don't have to go out and search for and pay you know at a Goodwill or you know anywhere else. Uh, and that's not a bad answer at all. It's a good answer because again, you're not having to put any money out and if you're getting started on eBay and it says an extra side hustle in that well you might not have the money and the capital already kind of preloaded for you to go and spend a thousand dollars building inventory to kind of launch yourself so it is a really good place to start with just the things that you already have around your house the problem is eventually when you run out of that you're gonna end up back at the you know square one with okay what is it that I'm gonna go out and source and, and really try and uh, become familiar with to sell consistently. Um, as you can see behind me here, I've got tons and tons of shoes. I really didn't know hardly anything about shoes when I started selling on eBay, so I did a lot of research on it. Now I sell a lot of shoes. If you've watched my other video on ties, um, you'll know that I'm a big fan of selling men's ties, and that's another item that I wasn't all that familiar with, but I did the research on, and now it's a big part of my business. Well, since then, I've gone back and I've just started to think with a little bit more common sense is like, what is it that I already know a lot about? Uh, what is it that, you know, are interests of mine where I have a pretty good understanding of the value of these items and I won't have to do quite as much of that research. Uh, you know, when I first started kind of flipping things, it wasn't on eBay, but it was on Craigslist, on OfferUp, on Facebook. And uh, I used to buy and sell a lot of watches. Um, I love watches. Uh, I'm wearing, you know, a Seiko Turtle for any other watch fans out there right now that I just picked up on eBay to flip. Uh, and I, evidently, I love this so much, I'm probably going to hold on to it. That's a total side point. But th it was something that I was already into. So I was familiar enough to know brand names, uh, specific models that um, those brands were popular for, what. Uh, generally I could get for them uh, so it, it let me know like okay well I know I can sell it for this so if I find it for you know $150 less than that I could probably buy it turn around and, and you know flip it so when I have had friends that have asked me you know how they might get started selling on eBay uh, or you know flipping locally uh, I try to look at each of them and, and knowing them, I give thought to, well, what is it that you already know? What is it you're interested in? What are your hobbies? What do you have a background in? What do you do for work that you might be very familiar with the particular industry? Uh, those are relevant questions and they should be something that's individualized a little bit more so than, than just strictly what they have at their house. Uh, for instance, I have a really good friend who played uh, baseball for 25 years and played professionally. I would assume he knows just about everything there is to know in terms of what the brands are for baseball bats, uh, baseball gloves, cleats, all of the relevant items to playing baseball that he was going and spending money on, he's going to know a lot more about than you know 99% of the population. Uh, baseball bats just happen to be an item that I've seen selling on eBay for tremendous amounts of money. Enough so that I've started to do a little bit of research on how to sell them. But I'm having to do all that research. I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, what are the brands? What's the lengths of the bats? Uh, what type of condition is a deal breaker for a potential buyer? What are the things that are commonly being looked for? 
you know, each item has sometimes keywords that are what people need to know or want to know about a, a, a you know, any item. But you know, stand, stand on the uh, topic of baseball bats. There's all these features to them that I don't really know about, and my friend already has all that knowledge. So it would be a great place for him to start because he could be very profitable on it, and he already knows. I'm assuming virtually everything that there is to know about him. He may also additionally have a tremendous network of people that he has access to to actually purchase some of those items. So all of those things make it an ideal place for him to start. I wouldn't tell him to go hit up the Goodwills and try and find the, the you know shoe racks and see what he can come up with in dress shoes. Uh, he's got too much potential there with all his knowledge base for that to be the starting point for him. So, you know, things like snowboarding, things like, uh, you know, paintball, um, a lot of other sports and hobbies that people might go and invest in equipment for. A lot of those things, the equipment is expensive. So uh, if you're spending the money on it, you're probably doing the research as a buyer that's going to really come in handy when you flip it around and now you're the seller. Uh, the other thing is there's so many people out there that decide they're going to pick up a new hobby and instead of buying something that's used and they kind of can get their feet wet with, they go out and they spend all the money on looking uh, really good when they're hitting the slopes. They buy the expensive jacket, they buy an expensive snowboard, uh, or they're going to go uh, play golf and they want to be fully decked out, have you know beautiful set of pink golf clubs, you know all these all these things that they really haven't earned the right to even deal with, but they're determined that this is going to be their new hobby, and so they go and spend a ton of money on it. And then a week later, they're like, "I hate this." Uh, you know, they fall down a bunch on the slopes. Uh, they have a terrible round. You know, for six months that you know they don't realize that it takes time to become good at these things. So they either lose interest, they determine they hate it, or they just kind of find something else that takes their interest away. But that's where you get a lot of opportunity to, to get really good used items that are relatively unused. So if you're out hunting for these things at garage sales and that, you're going to find potentially some niche areas that not everybody else that's out there trying to look for uh, things that they can pick up and flip are going to be honed in on. And that's where there's a tremendous amount of opportunity to kind of carve out your niche. But do it in something that you're already interested in, that you already know. And you're going to save yourself so much time and energy on doing all the research for it. So I'm not saying that you're not going to still need to go and see on eBay specifically uh, what type of um, volume there is in terms of uh, sales and what type of price points things are selling for. But you're not going to have to familiarize yourself near as much as picking something that you just heard other people are successful with. So. That's really uh, the bulk of what I wanted to kind of hone in on today is just to tell you sell what you know, sell what you buy, sell what you're already interested in and it's going to save you a tremendous amount of time researching, wandering aisle after aisle through Goodwill or other thrift stores uh, and there's just, uh, you know, there's also a lot of potential for you to buy things that you may actually use yourself and then turn around and still make a profit on six months later when you found something even newer to use. So, uh, yes, start with the things that you have around your house, but more importantly, recognize that the reason you have them in your house is because you had an interest in them. And if you have you know, a closet full of a particular item for a sport or for some other type of hobby, then this, my, my assumption here is that you know enough about it to turn around and become profitable selling it. And keeping in mind too that um, if, you, if it's something that you're part of a community in, then you have access to a whole bunch of other people that may have those items that you can buy at a discount and then turn around and sell. And that's where it really starts to uh, give you some opportunity, especially once you've established relationship with those people where they know that you're a buyer for it because now they're going to come to you on future items that they have that they're trying to get rid of and most of those people out there are not going to be doing it on eBay they're going to be looking for the easy way out and that means you can buy things at a discount and then make a profit on it on the other side 
So if you appreciated this video, again, I'm going to ask you to hit the like button for me, hit the subscribe button for me. And also, I'm really looking to start making some other videos on some different things related to business, related to personal finance, uh, things that I learned you know, going through my 20s that have helped me become much better with money, much better at making money, um, you know, stock market trading. I would love to hear down in the comments for anybody that's spending time doing a side hustle on eBay, like what are the other things that you're interested in learning? What are the other things that you're interested in developing? Uh, if you're doing this, I can only believe that it's because you're trying to hustle, you're trying to create some additional income for yourself and you're trying to better yourself and that's something that I've spent quite a bit of time trying to do it's taken me into a whole bunch of different areas and there's a lot of those things that I would love to focus on but I want to make sure that it's things that uh, people are actually interested in hearing about so please 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 uh, comment below and let me know uh, what other things that you might be interested in again I've had thoughts about talking on um, some stock trading which I've done for about the last nine ten years uh, you know business networking um, I've worked in my family's business for about 15 years and I've spent a lot a lot of time in uh, you know aspects of networking marketing advertising so you know all of these things I have interests in I would love to talk about but I, I really want to make sure that there are things that you guys would like to hear about so uh, please comment again below and I will talk to you soon thanks